See if we talk a wee bit about the school. Right? Do you remember who your teachers were? Mr Watson. There were, in Glassford School at that time, the, the, the age range was from four and a half up to eleven, at which point you were segregated. The really brainy ones went to Hamilton Academy and the rest of us went to Strayman. I went to Strayman. The, I have got pictures of the class, of primary classes. To, if I thought to even, you know, you know I, I'm here and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're here so that we can get your recollections of growing up and going. Yes. Right. Now, so if you, when you were at school, so you mentioned one of the teachers. Um, I mean, Miss Watson. Uh -huh. What's your memories of Miss Watson? Miss Watson was oh the second class. There were three classrooms in Glassford School, and there were different age groups in the same classes. The primary school had started maybe we tiny debt, you know, we single chairs, single. Then you moved in to a desk that took two and invariably the boy that you sat with in primary three or four, you, know, you, you both peed yourself at the same time and you both did this and you need to go to the toilet and, and the, the boy that I was sitting with was called John Marshall, Marshall's farm is still there and I believe one of the marshals is still in it. It might be John's grandson or... No, John died oh, 20 years ago. Uh, and I think dementia had something yeah. to do with that, but I can't remember anything about that. But I remember when the... the School toilets, for want of a better word, where there was a girl's shelter, there was a boy's shelter, the lady, uh, the girl's toilets was off the girl's shelter, the boy's toilets was off the, the, the boy's shelter, and I can remember John Marshall and several others having peeing contests up the wall. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, We, because it was wartime, Mr. Allen, the headmaster, okay. had access to the plots where the primary school, this used to, at one time there was a sawyer or some with a business in there, at where the, the plots were. Does that, have you any idea where I'm talking about? No, I haven't, but it doesn't matter. You're not going to ruin the years. So what did you do in the plots? We grew vegetables. And the best vegetables got to display at the Fleur Show. Uh, Mr Allen, the headmaster, promoted a wee bit rivalry. Um, you know, gave the boys an interest in gardening. What you were actually doing was make, was producing vegetables for the table. We didn't, we weren't aware of that at the time. But he was subsidising our diet with fresh vegetables. And the vegetables that you grew, were they used in the canteen at the school? Or were they given to the households? They were the ours. They were, they were, the. The boy that, or the boys, we, we all had a wee plot, uh, but you, not on your own. The, the, there may have been three of you, depending on many of you. This was in the top classes. The primary school didn't get into this. This was the top. I mean, you, you know you were, when you were growing your own vegetables, you got taken your carrots, your turnips home. Uh, I, I think tatties took up too much room. I don't think we'd, although my father, who's, 
family owned a lot of ground round the back of the years, had plots where he grew p potatoes uh, from the table right up to the early 50s till the, well, till the shortages went away mm -hmm. and the rationing all stopped mm -hmm. uh, and life sort of resumed. Yeah. But primary I, school I, were, were, were teaching you how to grow your own vegetables. That and was Mr. Allen. And, and the benefit of that was you could take it home and your mum and your mum could then cook That's right. Okay. And you, you, the, the, the flower show, the Glassford flower show was a good flower show. You know, and there was a, a section for the junior, there was a junior section, mm -hmm. and there was, uh, and remember the, the rivalry that so and so had won and told me as good as yours, <laughs> you know, this type of thing. Yeah, but Mr. Allen promoted the, you know, the growing of the vegetables to subsidise the table, yeah. and we weren't aware of that at the time. No, no, it was just another life lesson that they were teaching. Uh, yeah. Uh, we would that oh I mean Glassford the flowers the gala day I was a page boy and then I was a courtier you know the the, the the gala day was in June the flower show would end in August beginning of September in different season different weather. Uh, there was much, in my opinion, much more camaraderie then than there is now, in my opinion. At, we all mixed together, bearing in mind, which immediate, we're not talking about a time where rationing still existed and everything was shared. If you had something, you know, Mrs. So-and-so's run out of sugar, take her that sugar up. I mean, I remember doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, Davidson's farm. We, Joe Davidson, on the black market, sold eggs. <laughs> His hands laid and he sold Eggs, I can remember my mother pickling eggs. Do you know that eggs can be pickled? Yes, uh -huh. I remember the, the white enamel pail, whatever it was, the liquid, she put the eggs in there and you had eggs all year round because your mother had pickled them. Uh, I ate eggs. Or I did, you know, eventually when I married my good lady wife, we shared an egg, and, but up to I hated eggs because of these pickled eggs. <laughs> uh, as I said, I can remember German bombers must be 1943, now I'm in four at the time, dropping a bomb on these heaps of lime that the, at Lincoln Burn, that the farmers had scattered in preparation to line the ground to assist the growth. Uh, was some German in 1943 dropped a bomb on them, thinking it was something that it wasn't. Uh, you were talking uh, about the boys. We used to, in the, in the good weather, you know, the, 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 we, we went swimming in the, in the Avon, the, the frozen, yes, but you went two days of sunshine and you went into the Kentuckys. Do you know the Kentuckys, the big Kentucky and the wee Kentucky? The old Glassford Bridge as it now is. Uh, the one that's restricted, a weight restriction on it. Okay. 
going to the left and going down towards Stonehouse. The Avon takes a bend to the left. There are two pools. There's a, one which is deep, or was deeper. All these sand quarries will have attended to that. There was the, the wee Kentucky where you went if you couldn't swim, and the big Kentucky where you went if you could swim. I mean, one would maybe be two feet deep and the one would the other would be three feet six deep. And you all learned to swim in there. And the weather was much better then than it is now. <laughs> I'm not believing that. <laughs> I mean, oh, definitely the weather was much better then than it is. I know, I know, and six weeks was a lot longer than six weeks now as well. Uh, <laughs> that, I mean, can you remember going to school and getting six weeks holidays? I know, but it felt like six months. I know, I know. Uh, as I say, in the village, there weren't a lot of us. Uh, and we all used to hunt in groups consisting of the biggins and the weeans. And you progressed from being a weean to being a biggin when you went from being maybe eight to being nine. Now, being a biggin entitled you to run your gear. Can you remember? Uh -huh. Run what you get and didn't buy the... Do you know what you get? What? <laughs> I know what I'm going to say. Right, keep going. If you go up the Hamilton Road, from Glassford up towards Hamilton Crossroads, the road to Hamilton, you go straight through onto Chapel and yep. to Glassford. That's... Right, okay. There's another crossroads, that's the top crossroads, there's a bottom crossroads at the top the of... Rugby, the rugby park. Right, right, anyway, on. moving on. Right, Move so on. Right. So you become a big game. You know, and, and that entitled you to run your gear. No, on the public highway. A metal gear. They were, where they all came from, they must have come from Colville's, you know. Somebody made with the cliques mm -hmm. and you ran your the half dozen boys all ran about with you know, ran up to Straven. Then turned we didn't never came to, we never came as far as Straven, but the halfway house we turned them and you run back again. Okay. Uh, happy days and it never rained. No. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> I you remember, get a selective memory. I <laughs> Gundun Ho Hill, you know Ho Hill where you got to be Don't ask me if I know, I don't know. Just assume I don't know. Right, because I don't know. You must know the graveyard. It's at Glassford. Aye. Yes, uh -huh. To get there, you leave the village and you go down a hill that turns right, then it turns left. Yep, okay. 1947, the, the snow snowed and the wind blew. And that road filled up. The snow blew right across it. And all the wee boys went down and excavated all this drift and we made our own snow houses. And I remember the absolute disgust when our fathers came home and their mother and our mothers sent our fathers down to jump up and to flatten all these houses in case we get suffocated when it fell on the us. I remember that the disgust that we all felt that our work, day's work and enjoyment gets stamped on. <laughs> I remember that clearly. That was 47. And, I rem uh, and it's never snowed since. Well, never like that. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. And You're right just now. We'll just cut it here then. Okay. You leave Straven, heading for Glassford. You cross the old railway line. The North Station is... Do you know what I'm talking about? The old railway line? Yes, sir. That was the North Station. The South Station was in Station Road. 
which that station and station road continued on up towards air and there was a viaduct just above uh, Gilmerton, past Gilmerton. Mm -hmm. It's past on clock. And it, it's, it spanned where Loudon Hill is. Mm. The road came round and swung down, the train, the railway line swung across that bridge and went, came down into Darvel and continued on Darvel New Mills through to Ear, Presley and Ear. My mother and father, in particular, immediately after the war, our summer holiday consisted of seven days in Presswick in somebody's spare room and I remember going on holiday to Presswick at, it must have been very close, 1947 maybe, and an American transport plane landing at Presswick Airport crashed, the, a wheel failed, and these American soldiers, us American airmen, had perished in this bomb, that are in the, the wreck of the, the plane. I, I can see everybody ran out, ghouls, there's a, a plane in fire, and I remember going to there. We did that going to, that was our annual holiday, going to Presley. And you got the train? Uh, then into the 50s, my, my mother and father walked, walked with me, I walked with them, uh, long walks. I remember going from Glassford up through Straven out towards Loudon Hill, not going just as far as Loudon Hill but to the Covenanters Monument at oh, what's the wee village? Well oh, it's Drumclog. You turn off at Drumclog? Drumclog. Yep. Turning right before you get to Drumclog, yeah. you go up to the, the Covenanters Monument. Yep. I remember doing that as a, mm -hmm. the, maybe 12, walking you know, with my mum and dad. Because my father had been a veteran of the First World War, came through it. And as a result of his army experiences, he was in charge of going round the village, checking all the blackouts, and he, because of his ex war experiences, uh, first war experiences, he had different answers to, to questions. I, th I think having seen things that he saw in the second world, of, he saw these things in the first war. He did the trenches in France, did the trenches in Gallipoli, both in Turkey and in Italy got shipped home from Italy to die. No, they thought he would not make it to back home, but he did. And as a result of his wartime experiences, he hated everything Turkish for the rest of his life. And 
how have we got onto that subject for we not allowed in Ella? I just don't know. Well, you're wandering around here, don't be leafy lanes. Let's go back. We were talking before about the silver paper that. that came silver from paper was dropped. And when was that, roughly? That was. The war ended in 1944. The war in Europe ended in 1944. That must have been in 19, at, at, the, at, at the latest, 43, when I was four years old. Okay. I can remember, you don't remember Jackson Street, you don't know Jackson Street. I remember going into the field with behind Jackson Street, where the old Fipper field, there was a field between the old Fipper field, the, 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 the sewerage works. Uh, I remember picking this silver paper up in that field, mm -hmm. 43. Uh, that, that really is as far back as my memory goes, but that's the, that silver paper has never left me. And, we're, and it came from the skies, it just fell out the skies. Well, if just as far as, as I was concerned, it had fallen from the sky. Uh, and it was to, we were to, I remember something about confusing British radar. But the, the Blitz, the, the, Ameri the, the German Blitzes of London, and the south of England had ceased by that time. The war wasn't over, but it was won, if that makes sense. Uh, I mean, the, the, the war, I, I, I remember the atomic bombs going off in Japan, and that brought the war to a complete close. Okay, we were talking as well about um, Muirburn House. Muirburn House and your recollections of that. So d just run over that one for us. How did that happen and, and how did it affect the village? The story at the time was that Muirburn House had been blown... Well, I, I remember the house being blown up. The, we were... The households were all told, open your windows between... 10 and 11 in the morning. And my mother and everybody opened their windows at the appropriate time. And I can remember, I can't remember the bang, but I can remember the experience of it, probably fear, when, whoom, and there was a vibration. Muirburn House ceased to exist of that moment. If you go down to the... You will yeah, still right. see traces. Know, but who blew it up? What? Who blew it up? It was blown up. The story at the time was that it had been blown up as a dummy run to blowing the Gestapo headquarters in The Hague up with the same bomb. But when the American army came, when America joined the conflict, when Japan invaded, bombed Pearl Harbor, that, the, the, the Americans had been neutral and tried to stay neutral till that happened. But after that, the Americans came in en masse and D-Day, was spearheaded by Americans. D did you know that? Aye, but how did that relate to blowing up the house? To, so it was, was it Americans that blew it up? No, well, I don't know who was responsible for it, actually. It must have been the British government that said we, that, that, or someone must have said there's a big house 
in that location, which resembles its size with the Gestapo headquarters in The Hague, okay. we're going to bomb The Hague and we don't want to da damage Holland or the, the populace. We'll have a dummy run and see if we can contain what's going to happen to the surrounding. And the, the, the must have been monitored, which I'm quite sure it was. I, I, Everything shook, I can remember everything shaking. And if you want to go back down to Muir, but do you know where I'm? No. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right. Okay. Go down and look. Right. Please. Then. So and what's, that, what's there? At the moment, what's there then? At the moment, if you're going from Glassford. No, not how to get to it. Tell me what's there. What, what remains? There, there? Well, I haven't been down for years. There were steps up to what was up to the the big fancy doors that opened and you went into a mansion which had been left empty. Beyond the mansion there was a wall. In there there was against the one of these walls there was a conservatory where the house had obviously grown its grapes and that, an affluent family had lived in there at one time. I don't know who they were, yeah. but they had lived in that house and it had been vacated, I take it, because wartime, you know, we can't even get the coal to heat it for a, for a kick-off. They had moved away. Okay, so... And someone in their wisdom said, well, that resembles the Gestapo headquarters. We'll do a dummy run. And the houses in Glassford, when the bomb went up at 11 o'clock on a Monday morning, you know, zoom. Yeah. After the war, it became one of our our being other boys went down and played in the ruins of Muirburn. Went in. The, they still had great. The, the there was a big square garden within walls, and there was grapes grew within the confines of these houses or that house big. Glass house, mm -hmm. no gone. And we went down there and stole the grapes. There was nobody to stop. No, 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 you know. And below that, the is the burn, the whole burn, whole burn. Can't remember its proper name. The Kidder's Farm. I don't know whether it's Kidder, does that mean anything to you, Kidder's Farm? That's the, the farm. Do you know the burn brick? The burn on the. No, I don't. You did. Just describe it, Bill. You know where it is. Well, that. Turning to walk down that, you walked into a heavily wooded area, all more or less gone. Uh, and we used to. The we being the local boys, the you, when you got became a biggin, you were you know, your mother allowed you to go down and play in the woods, uh, and you had ropes and tied between trees and an adventure playground in the wood. Muirburn House was heated with coal and they had their own wee coal seam that you entered across the burn. Uh, at one time it must have been above the burn, but through neglect it, the last time I was down there, and I haven't been there for 40 or 50 years, the, the gaping black hole was still there. Uh, as youths, we went in and saw the, where the excavation of the coal had taken place to heat Muirburn House. Mm -hmm. 
that's all I can tell you about that. Yeah, that's it's fascinating. In, in, in nineteen nineteen forty seven. Okay, that would be forty eight. Right. That would be. Yeah. And uh, the, the Are you just wait point me in the direction and just leave me? Right. Okay. <laughs> So no, the recording just now. Uh -huh. right, so. I, 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 on VJ night and on VE night, the village celebrated by having bonfire, uh, setting a bonfire on top of the air raid shelters, of which there were two in the village. One opposite the town hall oblique pub, okay. and the other down beside the school in what is or used to be the play, the, the, the football field. No, the, the football field with a dip in it. Okay. Uh, and on VE night, there was a massive bonfire on top of the air raid shelter. And another one on VJ night. Uh, we didn't appreciate at all what victory and or how the victory in Japan had been achieved. I had some recollection of there being a war that my family were not involved in. My cousins, I had, they were, they were, their name was Thompson. They were my father's sister's sons. One rose to the rank of major in the, oh, one of the guards and his brother had been one of the unlucky few who didn't get away when they evacuated, oh, what was the port that the evacuation of Europe took place when, I'm saying England, they crossed the English Channel. Dunkirk. 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 Bobby and Willie were the two Thompson brothers. Willie got captured at Dunkirk and spent the rest of the war as a prisoner of war. His brother rose to the rank of major, but uh, one of the things he lost was his leg at whatever time during the war. And I remember my sister, who was 11 years older than I, that was a mistake, I appeared very late in my parents' life. Uh, my sister took me up to somewhere close to her broth to see Bobby Thompson, who had lost his leg. He was an antique dealer. He had done very well selling antiques. And his brother, who was the prisoner of war, was convinced that he had been experimented on, had given him something that affected his immune system. He caught everything. Caught this and he didn't live long after the war. And he's as I said, this guy with the one leg had been rose to the rank of a major. So he was an actual soldier. Uh, and he had lost that leg in Italy. What's that? On the, uh, I you've got you'll answer this question because I've forgotten what's the volcano near Naples? Vesuvius. He had been stationed on the, the 
on the, the plain below, the grassy flat plain below Vesuvius, when Vesuvius erupted in 1944. Now he had a memory of evacuating that plane in a hurry mm -hmm. uh, when Vesuvius erupted, mm -hmm. took everybody by surprise. What else do we go into now? I think that's about